Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be proving that Kerbin is actually flat, using an airplane and a level thingy. Let's find out what happens. Welcome to What The Math. Okay, 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 okay. You probably know that I'm being sarcastic. And you probably know where I'm getting this idea from. Let me give you some background story on what's happening here and why I think sometimes people can be a little bit stupid. Okay, as a teacher, I really feel bad saying that, but there are people out there that really are a little bit stupid. Here's one example. So you may have heard about this guy. He basically went on an airplane and flew from North Carolina to Seattle, and he used a spirit level, which kind of looks like this, to try to prove that Earth was flat because his spirit level didn't really change in terms of actual angularity almost at all. And he basically used this to kind of scientifically prove that Earth was flat. Okay, fair point. Let's do the same in Kerbin Space, Kerbin Space Program. But let me just actually show you what he, what he does here first. So he basically puts the um, spirit level here the bubble indicates the levelness, and you can kind of see that it kind of really doesn't change that much. I mean, there's a bit of a oscillation here and there when he either moves the um, spirit level or when something happens, like a turbulence or something on their airplane. And I mean, he does kind of make, I guess, a bit of a fair point that the spirit level doesn't really move that much in 23 minutes that he spends on the plane. And according to him, he, it should have moved. So let's maybe do a bit of math, and then let's do this in Kerbal Space Program. All right, here we go. Let's start with the actual path he took. So we're actually going to go to Google Maps and type uh, North Carolina. And I actually don't know what city he was coming from. So North, North Carolina to Seattle. Look at this beautiful line that it creates. Wait a second, that doesn't look like a line. That looks like a, a curve. Why, why is it a curve? Is it actually going right first and then it returns to Seattle? Well, no, it's actually following the curvature of Earth. This is that actually what we would call a geodesic. Uh, this guy spends 23 minutes on a plane, the total flight time is 5 hours and 45 minutes. So he spends approximately 1 15th of the whole time recording this, and he fast forwards it. So in basically, in 1 15th of this flight path, let's see how the curvature actually changed. So basically, let's, let's imagine that we divide this by, a, you know, this is a half, this is the fourth, this is an eighth. This right here, approximately this right here, so maybe this here, is 1 16th. Kind of looks like a line, doesn't it? In other words, the curvature doesn't really change that much. All right, so we'll, we'll, let's keep doing a bit of math here. So how much would the curvature change in this period of time? So technically, the um, distance he may have covered is somewhere between 400 to 500 kilometers, which is approximately like one one hundredth of a total circumference of Earth. I don't remember exactly what it is in miles, but it's approximately one one hundredth. We know that Earth is, you know, assuming it's a circle, would have 360 degrees in it, right? So one one hundredth would be approximately four degrees. So it should have changed by about four degrees in 23 minutes. All right, so that's kind of like changing approximately 0.17 degree per minute or... If we were to compare this to the minute clock of a of an actual clock, so like one of these clocks that you're looking at right now, this is the minute clock, right? It's actually currently moving at a speed of about six degrees per minute. So every single minute, it covers about six degrees. In that airplane that he was flying in, every minute you were covering 0.17 degrees. So I don't really think think it's that easy to see i you can you can stare at this for you know for a long time but the motion here is very difficult to detect even though it's moving it's kind of hard to see anyways but that's not what we're doing today we're doing kerbal space program we're gonna go take off in an airplane and we're gonna prove using the same method that kerbal is flat or in other words we're actually going to prove that his experiment was not very good Anyway, let's try it. I mean, he might be right. For all, for all I know, he's actually right, and both Kerbin and Earth are flat. So here we go. This is a, um, a pre-made airplane that you can kind of find in the uh, just a regular version of Kerbin. I'm going to take off. I'm going to be using MacJab to maintain my altitude. Now we're going to take off using, you know, just regular takeoff procedure. This is a pretty big airplane. It's kind of sort of similar to what you'd expect from an, um, an airline 
um, basically a jet plane, a jet airliner that he was probably using to get to Seattle. Let's take off and let's go to an altitude of about, I don't know, seven kilometers. We're basically are going to uh, assign ascent guidance. This is normally for rockets, but we're just going to tell autopilot to go to an altitude of seven kilometers and maintain it as, you know, as straight as it can. I'm going to see what happens. So here we go. I'm going to first engage autopilot. It's going to take off pretty steeply, actually. Maybe that's not a good idea. That's a horrible idea. That is a horrible idea. I am totally not doing this right. Okay, well, that will be an interesting experiment. <laughs> this, this proves nothing. This proves uh, that I am about to crash, I think. The experiment is not over. We can totally overcome the stall that we've just entered by accident because I should have done this manually. There we go. Like a pro. All right, so we'll, we'll enable this in a few minutes. Let's get to the altitude first. And while we're getting to this altitude, I just wanted to kind of give you some uh, the, some of the background info here and just kind of remind you that Kerbin is about 10 times smaller than Earth. So the actual curvature appears or basically affects this flight a lot, a lot faster, 10 times as fast as a matter of fact. If you, were, uh, if you look carefully, if I remove this for a second, you'll notice that, you know, you can see the curvature, right? It's clearly not flat. However, it's going to appear flat in a few seconds. And we're going to be mind blown by how flat it appears. So, I've enabled autopilot, which is exactly what was happening on the flight that this guy was experiencing. And um, at this point, we're close to the altitude we're supposed to be at. Now, first of all, how does the actual airplane measure altitude? Uh, most airplanes, they actually use atmospheric pressure outside to, to figure out what altitude they're at. The atmospheric pressure at a certain altitude is normally around the same. So using um, a very specific device, they usually can kind of estimate what altitude they're on. The thing about atmospheric pressure, though, is that because our atmosphere uh, is very turbulent, it changes everywhere. It's the atmospheric pressure here is not going to be the same as here and here. So because of that, the actual um, altimeter, the actual device that measures altitude is not always 100% accurate. And this is why the airplane will always try to actually change the altitude a little bit. Uh, my dad is actually a pilot and he, he was always telling me how um, once you enable autopilot, the airplane starts kind of modifying the altitude just a little bit and you don't notice it because it's such a minute change. Uh, but it does it so much better than, than, than a pilot and um, it often is completely undetectable. So the people um, that were posting on, on, on the video that this guy made, we're talking about how, you know, it, if you fly a mile, the actual altitude is supposed to change by like 60 feet or something. Um, and we don't feel it. So why is it that we don't feel it? Earth must be flat. Horrible reasoning, very bad logic. But the idea here is that, okay, look, look at how we're flying. We're almost at seven kilometers where this is practically the, you know, as flat as you can get. You'll notice that the altitude is barely changing. And you'll notice that the actual angular change is undetectable. If I were to put this, where was that thing? This spirit level on an airplane, the actual bubble would be shifted just a little bit. Like what, what was it? Points one of a degree or something like that. It would essentially be close to undetectable. And the airplane would actually change and modify the altitude just a little bit, but you once again would not notice it simply because it's just happening automatically without anyone really noticing based on the atmospheric pressure. And the actual altitude might be completely different because, you know, Earth might have like hills underneath or there might be um, the, the actual atmospheric pressure might be different depending on like if you're flying through a storm or something. So the airplane will have to kind of uh, adjust to that as well. So. Long story short, using the same experiment, using his logic, whoever this person was, I totally forgot his name because I don't think it's that important to be honest. Uh, and I'm sorry if it sounds rude, but I just, I really have trouble accepting stupidity sometimes. And this is one example of such stupidity. And anyway, you can kind of see that it's exactly the same parameters here. Like we're flying completely straight. This is not changing at all. It literally looks flat. The altitude is barely changing but you can clearly see the curvature and the changes here are 10 times greater than they are on Earth because 
um, Kerbin is only 600 kilometers in radius. Our Earth is over 6,000 kilometers in radius. The curvature on our Earth is much, much less prominent. And even with greater curvature, the actual angular change, the so-called uh, so called geodesic curve is practically undetectable. It's, it's almost invisible. It's almost impossible to tell that we're actually not flying completely flat. Now you can see the aircraft is clearly wobbling and this is actually how the game kind of tries to realistically represent these changes in altitude that the aircraft is experiencing. But because you're going so fast and because these changes are so minute, it's, it's kind of hard to feel them. I mean, it's practically impossible. And so, long story short, we're going at around the same speed that this guy was going. Uh, this is approximately maybe 700 kilometers per hour. We're also going at a relatively similar altitude, maybe a little bit lower than this guy was going. The curvature here is much more prominent and you can actually physically see it right here. But the airplane seems to be flying completely flat. Everything seems to be completely flat. Does this prove that Kerbin is flat? Yeah, well, using his logic it does. But we all know that it's not. As a matter of fact, if I were to zoom out of here, you would see that Kerbin is far from flat. As a matter of fact, it is the roundest object we have here. It is as round as they come. So, you know, was it a good experiment he performed? Of course it wasn't. Was it fun to watch someone try to prove something nonsensical using science? I was laughing really hard when I watched it and I really wanted to kind of make a video about it and here you go. And anyway, so if you are a flat earther and you still believe that somehow earth is flat in 2017, I've nothing to say to you, but you know, wish you best of luck. I don't think we'll ever be friends, unfortunately. However, um, the experiment that he performed was pretty clever. I actually, I have to, you know, salute this guy for coming up with this, even though it was kind of made no sense, but it was pretty clever. Anyway, and thank you for giving me an idea for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it, actually. I haven't played Kerbal Space Program in a while, and I'm glad to be back to it. Very simple experiment. Kerbin is flat. Or is it? Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support. Subscribe if you still haven't, and come back tomorrow to learn something else interesting, unusual, or maybe just watch me play a video game. Let's actually disable autopilot. Oh, jeez, my engines are off. And maybe let's uh, disable the acceleration here too and uh fly around i don't think this airplane can actually make it to space it's not powerful enough but uh we can try to see if we can maybe land somewhere even though i have no idea where i am located or if i'm actually flying over surface or water i think it's actually water but anyway thank you so much for watching everyone i'll see you tomorrow let's try to land this bird on this flat curbin as proven by funny signs. Here we go. We're going to use our altimeter to get to the point where we can land and try to land this aircraft. I actually kind of wish we had lights right now because I have a feeling that Earth, uh, the actual ground is coming up pretty quickly. I don't see anything though and I have no idea where I'm going. I did try to turn the lights on but at this point it is anyone's guess where we're going to be landing. Okay, here, here comes the ground. Here comes the ground. Oh, I can actually see it. Okay. I think they're fine, right? See you tomorrow.